Welcome to Electro Online. Now we're going to get ready to find the moment of inertia of an I-beam. Well, we're going to do it in sections. And what we're going to do first is simply the top portion of an I-beam. Assume that you have a flat portion here, a flat portion there, and then the connecting beam portion right here. But we're also only going to find the moment of inertia of that top portion of the I-beam relative to the x-axis. Now we're going to do it in two different ways. We're going to do it traditionally simply by integrating over that portion or we can also do it by using the parallel axis theorem. And we'll do it both ways and you can see that we'll get the same result. So first let's do it like this. So to find the moment of inertia relative to the x-axis that is equal to the integral from, well we're going to integrate from A to A plus the height of that portion of the beam. So from A to A plus H of the distance to the element squared, so y squared, times the area of that area element, dA, and dA is equal to the width of that portion times dy. So this becomes equal to, we can take the w outside integral sign, so w times the integral of y squared dy from a to a plus h. So now we go ahead and integrate that, that's relatively easy, so this is equal to the width times y cubed over 3, evaluated from a to a plus h. So we plug those limits in, that gives us one-third the width of that section of the I-beam, times, you plug in the upper limit, you get a plus h quantity cubed, minus, when you plug in the lower limit, you get a cubed. All right, so algebraically, we can go ahead and simplify that. First, we'll expand this portion. So this is equal to one-third the width times, we have a cubed plus, that would be 3a squared h plus 3a h squared plus h cubed. And subtract from that when plugging the lower limit, uh, where are we here? Let's see here. Yeah, the lower limit, we got uh, minus a cubed. I lost my term there. Okay, that means that this a cubed will cancel out with this negative a cubed that leaves us with this as a solution. So it's one-third the width of that portion of the beam times 3a squared, remember that a is the distance to the bottom of that flat portion of the beam, times the height, h, which is really the thickness of that beam, plus three times the distance to that portion of the beam times the thickness squared and plus h cubed. And I guess what you could do is you could, um, hmm, now nah, we'll leave it like that. That's good enough. The moment of inertia relative to the x-axis and there it is. Now, to show you that this is actually a reasonable solution, remember in the previous video what we have done is we had found the moment of inertia of a square section like this, s by s, a distance s away from the x-axis. Then what we ended up getting was we ended up getting i sub x was equal to 7 thirds, I believe it was 7 thirds, s to the fourth power. So this answer should turn into this answer if we let a equals s, h equals s, and w equals s. That is if a equals w equals h equals s. Let's do that. Let's replace everything by s to see if we end up with the very same result. So when we do that, the following happens. So i as a function, i, the moment of inertia relative to x, I should say, is one-third s times, this would be s squared times s, that would be 3s cubed plus 3s cubed plus s cubed. So notice we have 7s cubed times s, that's 7s to the fourth power divided by 3, is indeed 7 thirds s to the fourth power, which shows that it reduces to something that we've seen before. This looks like a reasonable answer. Now let's use the, what we call, thank you. So let's use the parallel axis theorem to see if we can get the same result. First of all, we want the moment of inertia of the center mass of that beam. This has a width w and an h, a height h. So we can say that the moment of inertia of the center mass, that would be equal to one 
12th, area of the beam times h squared. And so the area of the beam is equal to h times w, so this becomes 1 12th w h cubed. So that's the moment of inertia of the center mass of the beam. Now we're going to displace it upward a distance of a plus h over 2. So from here to here, that would be distance a, and then we have to add another h over 2. So that's the distance here that goes into the equation over there. So that means that the moment of inertia relative to the x-axis is equal to the moment of inertia of the center mass, which is 1 12th, the area times h squared, plus a, the area, times d squared, and d is a over h, a plus h over 2 quantity squared. So this becomes equal to 1 12th a h squared plus a times, this is a squared plus the product, twice the product of those two, which is a times h plus this one squared, which is h squared over 4. And of course, I'm trying to show that that is equal to this quantity right here. Hmm. Well, let's multiply things out and see what we get. So this is equal to 1 12th a h squared plus a a squared plus a a h plus 1 quarter a h squared. Notice we have two like terms that we can add. 1 12th a h squared plus 1 quarter a h squared. Well, 1 quarter is the same as 3 twelfths. 3 twelfths plus 1 twelfth is 4 twelfths, which is 1 third. So this becomes equal to 1 third, the area times h squared plus a a squared plus a a h. Hmm, We're almost there. Let's see here. What if I turn a into the width times the height. So if I do that, I get the following. This is 1 third width times h cubed plus here we get width times h a squared plus and here we get width times a h squared see if that's correct. So I turned a into width times h, so that's width times h squared times an a. Now what I can do is I can factor out a one-third width. So this is equal to one-third times the width, and what do I have left? Here I have an h cubed. Of course, since I factor out a one-third, I have to multiply times three, so I have plus three times a square h plus three times a h squared. And that should be exactly the same as I obtained before over here. One third the width of the section of the beam times h cubed plus 3 a square h plus 3 a h squared. That looks like it's exactly the same, which means we use two different methods to find the moment of inertia of a section of I beam away from the x axis relative to the x axis. We saw that we got the same result, and in addition to that, if I assume that this was a distance s away, and we make that into a square s by s, I end up with the same result that I obtained in the previous video for finding the moment of inertia of a square section like that that was a distance s away from the x-axis. So that looks good. Now we have the moment of inertia of a section of an I-beam, and now next we can go ahead and actually find the total moment of inertia of an I-beam relative to the x-axis. So stay tuned, we'll show you how to do that.